Hey, and welcome to Hopcast. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Brad Chmielewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And so I took a trip to the Jewel. Ooh. <laughs> fancy, that must have been very exciting The for fancy you. beer store <laughs> known as Jewel. <laughs> Selection there, they do have some great beers. Revolution is there. Uh, I know Metropolitan was there. I didn't see them. This time, lots of new Belgian Usually stuff. Usually have some Firestone there. There was Firestone. But it's tough, like, carrying lots of stuff home, because I just walk there, so I have six packs. But I was like, oh, but this one comes in a 12-pack. <laughs> like, it's a mixer, so we can have multiple beers. Uh-huh. So I picked up some Berghoff. Chicago Place? Yeah, but not brewed here. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah part of Chicago history. Is that place even? It's still open, right? It's still there. Yeah, in yeah. The, they they in uh, the basement of some building <laughs> threatened to shutter, and then they kind of opened up again. And no um, one noticed either. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one really cared. But uh, <laughs> you know, very historical restaurant downtown Chicago. Oh. Uh, but they kind of. Spun it where, yeah, we're also a brewery, but they don't really make any beer. They contract this stuff out of the, um, the Stevens Point Brewery in Wisconsin. Right. Uh, many, point. many people starting in Chicago contract brew out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's I'm sure a pretty well-known place if you've drank in many new Chicago breweries. Mm-hmm. So That's somebody. where Half Acre got their start. They mm-hmm. were contracting out of that place as well. I think Baderbrow might still be there until their place is open. Okay. and. A few others, so. So we got two beers from this 12-pack. Yeah, we have a, a Dortmunder lager. Yeah, it's not an Imperial Dortmunder. <laughs> and we also have their winter seasonal here what? for Memorial Day. Uh, <laughs> might need to run through the stock a little bit at the Jewel over there, but... Uh... <laughs> so, first off, this should not have been on the shelf still. Yeah, that's a pretty late one, but... Right. But then why are you brewing a... This looked just like a... It just said ale. So I was like, oh, it must be an easy-drinking summer beer. <laughs> and then you open up the pack and it's, hey, wishing you the coziest, warmest winter season ever. All right. So we're waiting for a treat. Yeah. I, I'd say we... I'm, I'm not worried about this one, to be honest with you. This is really? Seven percent. Okay. Which, it might be able to, you know, stand the test of five months or something. Okay. But uh, this but Dortmunder, I'm a little concerned about. Right, because this had to have been brewed and, and packaged around the same time to be in that same 24-pack. Mm-hmm. Unless these were just sitting around like, shit, no one's buying these. Stick them in the Dortmunder <laughs> party pack. Um, hopefully that's the case. Right. So, <laughs> do, we, do you want to go safe, or do you want to go, let's see what the, the Dortmunder's let's got. Let's go with the Dortmunder. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let's crack it over. We got two of them just in case. I might pound this one by myself. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we got a sort of a little hazy, but pretty clear. Fog up your glass, it's too steamy. A little steamy in here. Yeah, it does have some haze to it. Um, And we did have a nice little little puffy head on there. mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm smelling a little bit of oxidation on it. Yeah, it's got a little funkiness. Mm. It's got a paper, paper type quality to it, and a kind of a lack of a real hop note. Right. Yeah. Well. All right. Cheers. Yeah, it just kind of tastes flavorless and. I have like a weird dryness in the back after it finishes. I uh, I, I, I could see it, if you're getting this beer fresh, I can see it probably being pretty good. Um, there are some there's some nice kind of true authentic German uh, characters in this oh, yeah. beer, which I think they've you know I, I would love to, to try it fresh because I think they're probably getting pretty close to. You know, a, a, a oh, nice German beer. A true Dortmunder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a true Dortmunder. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd like to, t- you know, not not bad. It's not uh, undrinkable. Uh, but I definitely think 
tasting this beer fresh would be probably pretty good. Right, and so what is the normal, I guess, lager time? Like, what's the, like, what, a couple months? Like, to be, si- like, what? Probably not that long. Okay. Um, probably a month-long beer to make. No, for, like, for it to be on the shelf before oh. it kind of maybe starts to get some of that Man, I think or, like, could it, it could be as quickly as, like, a month, right? Depending yep. on the seal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just kind of a delicate beer style, so even after 30 days, you're kind of starting to pick up some of those oxidation type type characters. Okay. Um, and this has been, I would say, probably six months since it was packaged. Yeah. Well, if it's a holiday, it had to probably come out in November. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, something like that. So, not the ideal time to be drinking this beer, and it certainly uh, is not going to represent itself like it should. Just because uh, we're not drinking it when it when we should be drinking it, but um, yeah, I, I this one was there's there's enough in there for me that I would if I saw it and it was fresh I'd, I'd check it out, especially in a boot. Yeah, I feel like this is good boot beer. Yeah, and I I kind of like that the the fact that they're making a Dortmunder. You don't see those too often. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got Great Lakes that makes one, and I can't really think of any others. Okay. Like that aren't on a like a brew pub scale that actually see a package, so I think that's cool. Um, well, I feel like when people pick up a package, you have like those two people that just want the easy drinking, like Miller Lite kind of stuff, and then like I want to get something for my money if I'm bringing it home. Mm-hmm. But if you're at like a brew pub or if you're at Burger it's like yeah, I just want something to drink and eat with, and yeah. not like I can still drive home. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, yeah, like, too bad. You think all Stephen Point's beers are always twist offs? Do twist offs? Do they let more air in, or is that kind of just like it could, maybe not? Like, I think they do. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a a reason for the industry standard, at least amongst craft brewers, to use that pry off crown. Now it. It could be to the point where they're getting the technology on those twist off caps to be pretty much just right there with the pry off. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I really haven't. You, you know, you, you see the argument can versus bottle. No one's really arguing twist off. Twist offs. <laughs> <laughs> it should start that movement. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here. <laughs> twist offs make a comeback. Team twist off. Use the hashtag. <laughs> Follow us in our crusade. <laughs> All right, so maybe we need to head down to Berghoff or have them invite us over to try this beer. Yeah. But, Drink it fresh. Yeah. But let's, uh, let's move on to the Christmas ale. <laughs> <laughs> Took care of that door, Munder. <laughs> Hell yeah, we did. <laughs> like that song, like, I got rid of that door under. Party's back on. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> so, are we ready to get in the holiday spirit? <laughs> yeah. Coming down the chimney with old St. Nick. We twist that right off. Boom. A little easy access there. Right. We got some Berghoff Winter Ale. Why not? Let's do it. All right, so we got a really nice color out of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a very pretty beer. Uh, nice clarity on it, deep, deep ruby red. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a little light tan head. Mm-hmm. Yep. Some nice, like, chestnut-type hues in there. Looks really nice. As expected, pretty malty. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's lacking a little bit. It's not like, a huge aroma, it, yeah. But it's got kind of like toasty, a little bit fruity mm-hmm. notes to it. Let's give it a try. Cheers. Yeah. All right. That's pleasant. It's a like, 7% beer. Really? Damn, mm-hmm. okay. I wouldn't guess that. Slightly aged. You know. Yes. <laughs> it's had time to mellow. Uh, but it's really clean and normal. It just like... Like just like the aroma, there's not a lot in the flavor. It's but it's nothing like bad. It's like 
drank one, all right, drink another one. Yeah, this also has, um, similar to the Dortmunder, it has a very, like, noble kind of hop character to it. Um, a noble actual hop or, like, like a mm-hmm. statue? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just like it has a very European feel okay. to the beer, um, with that kind of like fruity, bready malt backbone to it. Mm-hmm. It's a pleasant beer. Is it like what's making this a see a Christmas ale? Like, I feel like this is just like a this could just be an ale. Like, like don't why? Well, it's not really a Christmas or a it's winter a, ale. It's a winter ale, so it's just something that you know you tend to drink maybe bigger, sweeter. Things in the winter when it's a little but I guess colder it's out. Th- I feel like it's nothing like more than we would usually have. It's like oh, I kind of want. I can go for one of those right now. It's nothing like big and like too robust for the summer. No, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, it's a seven percent beer, mm-hmm. which is it's pretty big, but um, yeah, it's not it's not really huge in the mouthfeel. It's not overwhelming the palate, so. You could you could honestly drink it all year round. Right. I think it feels you'd like be a, fine. It feels like a good pizza beer. <laughs> like not an actual like I feel like a beer you would eat with pizza. I could see that. Like it just like it's refreshing. It has like that same like maybe like breadiness to it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, well, maybe like a like a savory sausage type yeah. of thing would would might go with it. Mm-hmm. I could see it for sure. But yeah, it's. I mean, I could definitely see wanting to drink this style of beer when it's, you know, five degrees outside. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't be turned away to drinking it in in August either. Right. You know, it's, I'm happy with this on the day before Memorial Day. <laughs> so, like, knowing that the Dortmunder was slightly oxidized, but it had great flavor, and this mm-hmm. other one, there's some other ones in the 12-pack too, so it's kind of like... These beers are pretty solid. They're safe beers, but it's kind of a maybe a dying style in America, or like a yeah, poised for not really the sexiest of yeah, like okay. craft beer yeah, styles out there right now. Um, you know, just a winter ale and a Dortmunder. But I definitely will give them credit for for doing those things and and contributing to the anti-death of those styles right yeah. you know uh you seen a lot of you know people like off color here in chicago that are kind of reviving styles that have died off uh so before we see more styles die off it's it's nice to see breweries attempt those and kind of educate people on what these different styles of beer are and what would be a good uh german style you'd like to see them make that maybe isn't made enough uh like hellas lager uh, you don't see too many of those. Um, a lot of styles uh, of lager, German okay. lager, that most craft breweries don't make, you know. But a lot of those craft brewers don't make it because they don't have time right. or the, like, cold space for it, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes takes a lot of time to, to do those things. I mean, we're, we're pretty lucky here in Chicago to have people like Metropolitan that mm-hmm. will, that are just solely dedicated to making those lagers for us so we can get fresh lager um, in the German tradition. They make great lagers, too. Yeah. It's not even yeah. like, really uh, good stuff. it's just fresh. No, it's good, fresh <laughs> lager. Yeah, so it's not an issue for us here in Chicago, but I, I don't know that other cities have the luxury of, you know, we, we have breweries here that kind of each have their own niche yeah. in the market of what they do. And uh, it's nice. You don't nice. hear the West Coast people like clamoring for the <laughs> yeah, door This is our, our all lager brewery <laughs> in San Diego. Yeah. Like the yeah, that just doesn't happen. Hmm. So, is that a? But maybe that goes back to like Milwaukee, like tradition. Yeah, that, a lot, a big German population in uh, in Milwaukee for sure, and and uh, I think Berghoff is kind of toes the line between being a Chicago brand, per se, because of that historic restaurant, but uh-huh. people kind of know that it comes out of Stevens Point, so I think they, they probably sell a lot of it up there, too. Mm-hmm. But I almost, I guess I never see Berghoff on tap no. anywhere. I don't, mm-hmm. I bet it's just not a sexy beer to sell. Yeah, I think they're just relying on on the people that bring, I would I would think, even mostly 12 packs home, like you did, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this, is just, easy, this is easy to carry. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that just want to like sit in their basement and drink beer, and they want to elevate it up a little bit. So they're yeah, they're going they're going for that burger off. Sorry, this is made in Wisconsin. I'm going to drink this. Yeah. So, but, but what the fuck do I know? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I just drink the stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fun to visit. I guess a, a staple, if you want to say, like a, yeah, a brand that's almost passed over. It's been a, a while since I've had a Berghoff beer, so it was it was kind of nice. Yeah. So cheers and thanks for watching. Yep. Cheers. <laughs>